Welcome back to part four. No, hang on a minute. Part three. Holy shit. Ho hopefully it's not four parts. So, yeah, part three. We're going to put this lot together and then have a ride on it. Literally ready to bolt together now. A little bit of arsing around, clean arsing around cleaning screws and things. There's some of the screws I really wanted, like... For instance, in this clutch cover, I really wanted to use new screws, but the budget isn't there for the genuine Honda ones, and I can't get JIS headed screws long enough, quick enough, so it's going back together. I've just vapor blasted the original screws um, just to make it a little bit tidier. So any, what, am I, what am I saying? Everything's ready to go together, so I'm literally going to bolt it together. Um, the J <laughs> can't speak. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. Hang on. Back in the room. Right. What was I saying? The the JIS screws I do have in stock I'm going to use. This is about the longest 6mm one I've got. So it's fine for these, but I've got nothing that will do the um, do the clutch cover and stuff. Anyway, let's get it together. So that takes care of that little piggy. That's all done. Remember from part one, I said, I think the shaft is binding because of the lack of clutch cover gasket. Well, turns out that was a correct assumption because it's nice and free now. And all I've done is have the cover off, Cerakote and clean it, put it back on with the new gaskets and that's fixed it. So that's all that was. Uh, pistons, barrels, cylinder head and stuff next and I'll time-lapse that as well. I know you want to see it all in detail and have me talk about it as I'm doing it, which is fair enough, but I haven't got the time. I'm really sorry. Go and subscribe down there somewhere and maybe join the Patreon. I want to get to a point where actually I can take my time and film it all in detail and edit it beautifully and stuff. You know, one video a week like that would be amazing, but the problem is it takes a shit ton of time and the bills have got to be paid so sort of chicken and egg in it really i want to i need to make the really good content so i can start generating income uh, whatever right um crack on i interrupt this time lapse with an important announcement um top tip time i just wanted to mention this you probably already know this but you know the gap in the circlip? The gap in the circlip does not go in this gap. Okay, so just know that. What you need to do, you, I've got a, in the G6R engine build video, series of videos, I've got, I show you my technique for getting these circlips in. Sorry, that sounds a bit clickbaity, doesn't it? But I just, I can't be asked to do it like this. It's hard to film. I had the con rods from the GSXR and the pistons on the bench so it was easy to sort of set a camera up and show you how to get these circlips in super easy by using this little cutaway and this shape of the piston here as a sort of wedge to get them in. You can almost get them in just with your fingers and then just finish them off with a with a little pick and then you've got to rotate them round so the gap is not in this gap. Does that make sense? Not even sure whether that's in focus is it? Anyway, on, onwards. I'm just OCDing over these circlips. I'll tell you a little story. Nobody likes to admit their mistakes, do they? But we're all human at the end of the day. About, oh blimey, over 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I did a, it was a warranty job on a, what was it? A VZ something, 800 maybe, um, big cruiser thing, um, V-twin. Can't remember why the top end was off it. Anyway, it had, something had gone wrong with it. It had had new, brand new cylinders and pistons and other bits and pieces. Can't, oh, no it wasn't. That's a big fat lie. It was a... Uh, Summit with a crankshaft, had the engine completely apart, put it back together. I was working at a dealer at the time, put it back together, 
customer had it back, happy days. About a month later it came back in, burning oil on one cylinder. Anyway, fucking long story short, stripped it down. The gudgeon pin, the circlip had come out and was, anyway, basically the gudgeon pin, the wrist pin, had worn a fucking slot in the side of the barrel. Consequently, it was fucking burning oil, but circlip had come out for some reason. And I was OCD back then as well about getting them in the right place and, you know, etc, etc. But yeah, so now, fucking hell, it keeps me awake at night. So, just like to triple check every single one, make sure... Good tip as well is, <clears throat> I just said, didn't I, they don't have the gap of the circlip in the gap of the piston. Also, when once the circlip is in the correct position, you want to be able to turn it in the groove. I just get a... A sharp little pick and just hook it in and sort of make sure I can slide it around you know so you know it's definitely in the slot uh, anyway Wafflesville I just thought I'd share that little story with you um, right clean this off base gasket o-rings all the bits and pieces just yeah onwards So I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking, Jim, piston ring compressor. Well, actually on these, yeah, easy peasy really. There's a massive chamfer on the bottom of the barrel. And if you're careful, a little bit of tappy tappy, jiggery pokery, just push the rings in. They go down nice and easy. So that's that. Uh, cylinder head next. I've just given this a wipe down with some brake cleaner. I'll give it another wipe over said it a million times before but cleanliness is so important with this sort of stuff but you know that already gone don't panic Mr Mannering that's what magnets were made for so there's not much going on here uh, there's a crucial piece here which you saw on the tear down a little oil jet and some dowels with big fat o-ringy things on head gasket yeah nothing too technical onwards It's very easy to miss the cam chain tensioner with a tensioner blade, so I like to have a bit of a look with my camera. It's definitely sitting in the right place there. I have a question. Why is the filter washer always missing? The spring's there. No washer. Why?
Right, okay, so I've got oil coming up now through these feed pipes for the cams. Um, expecting it to spray out a bit more than that, but it's absolutely freezing cold. It's oil's like treacle almost, and I've had the filter off and stuff. There's, there'll be air locks and stuff going on. It needs to be running, really. I just wanted to make sure there was oil getting up to the head, so that's all good. Get this buttoned up, get the other cover on, new o-ring for there, do the valve clearances. Carburetor's on. I need to go through the carbs quickly. They, I'm not expecting anything wrong, but they've been sat for six, eight weeks, just on the shelf. So I'm gonna pull the float bowls off, have a quick go through with those, make sure they're okay. Exhaust on, we'll be ready to run it. Oh, plugs obviously and stuff, very exciting. Right, see you in a bit. I've got a tip for you. Only the tip mind and only for a minute. This stuff, so somebody recommended this to me a few months ago. You know when you've got an O-ring that is a bloody nightmare and it falls out, you know, I'm gonna be turning this cover this way up, trying to get it on, and it's likely to fall out. Same thing with float bowl gaskets sometimes, carburetor diaphragms, that sort of thing. This high vacuum grease, it's silicon based, so it's safe on rubber. It's really thick, gotta to squeeze the tube really hard to get it out. It's really thick and really, really sticky. And it's great for holding in O-rings. You can smear it on the O-ring or just put a little bit in the groove and drop the O-ring in. You get what I mean? Good stuff. Thought I'd share that. That stuff. Molly coat, high vacuum grease. Yeah, love it. Right, stop talking, do some work. Okay, so just working my way through the valve clearances. I've done number four. Just working my way this way. The old Allen key down the spark plug hole to find top dead center. Uh, about there. Predictably, the clearances are massive because the cam's been ground. Um, no biggie. Story, this spanner, it's a brittle spanner, an eight and a nine mil. It's the very first spanner I ever bought with my own wages when I was an apprentice. We used to have the brittle um, truck come to the shop I was at. And uh, yeah, I went on the brittle truck, doing valve clearances on Honda C90s or whatever it was back then. And I wanted my own spanner. We were lucky, we had a, like in this day and age, everybody has to have their own tools, but the workshop I worked in when I was an apprentice, it was basically full of tools because the boss that owned the shop, he was a mechanic himself, so, and it was a, um, back in the day, it was considered a five star Honda motorcycle workshop. We even had a rolling road and that was, fitted back in the late 70s. It was it was an epic workshop. <clears throat> Two thou they are, inlet and exhaust. Pretty tight that, isn't it? For a valve clearance. What I need to do is stop talking and actually focus on what I'm doing. These little individual feeler gauges for these engines. Hang on a minute, let me do this up and then I'll speak. <coughs> Click. That's the ticket. Um, yeah, they're awesome because if you're just dragging a full size feeler gauge through there, you sort of lose some of the resolution in terms of what it feels like but having like this is a two and a three so if I think I'm slightly on the 
Oh my God, Jim, you've just done it three thou. <sighs> it's your fault. Fucking distracting me. Start again. Uh, two thou. Yeah, you can really sort of feel what's going on with these feeler gauges. And then you set it to two thou, you think, oh, I may, might be slightly on the on the slack side. You've got a three on the other end to uh, do with dropping my ramp down a little bit. I'm having to be on tiptoes here. Anyway, I'm going to get on. I'm going to finish these valve clearances. I've uh, got the inlet manifold jobbies to put on here with new O-rings. Put the exhaust on. It's got oil in it. Put some plugs in it. I haven't been through the carbs yet, do that. Yeah, it'll come together. I'll probably bring you back in when we're about to um, run it because I don't think there's a great deal of interesting left. Click for the second time. That's better. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Coming together now, guys. Really starting to look like a CB400 again. I've had to use, you might have noticed in one of the other shots, I've had to use a few non-genuine Honda bolts, which upsets me a little bit, but I can't get them and yeah. So it's got some stainless Allen bolts on the top cover there and on these two. Um, it's starting to uh, come together, making the right ploppy ploppy noises. Sucky, sucky, five dollar. Right, I'm gonna do the car. No, I'm not. I'm not doing the car. I'll do the exhaust first, then I'll do the carbs. Right, onwards.